Okay, today we're going to talk about the secret life of machines. This was a BBC series that ran during the early 1990s. Pretty cool series. It, uh, it was created by a couple of gentlemen by the name of Tim Hunkin and Rex Gerard. I'm not sure I spelled pronounce his name correctly. Uh, although, uh, a sad note, uh, apparently uh, Rex had passed away uh, fairly recently. So, anyway, the, uh, uh, the series, as I said, ran in the early 90s. Uh, it was about uh, the, the design and, and, and a bit of the history of the invention of some of the, some of the more uh, common items that we see in everyday life, uh, common machines, you know, such as the vacuum cleaner, the washing machine, the radio, the automobile, the television, and so forth, so on. So I think the series ran for maybe maybe two or three, maybe two or three years. So uh, uh, one of the interesting things that he did, he also ran a. Uh, they also had the use of they used cartoons in the uh, throughout the series uh, in, in the in the intro here, which is what we're about to see. And they ran them really throughout the whole series. And apparently, the cartoons were drawn by uh, by uh, Mr. Hunkin, and and it was uh, a, an interesting and amusing uh, touch to uh, you know it could be what could normally be, normally be uh, perhaps a, a boring subject. But so uh, so here's a classic case here. Look, this is how all the uh, this, this is this is the uh, introduction to all all his, all their uh, TV all the shows here. So so it was kind of a, kind of a crazy thing. So uh, so which, uh, as I mentioned here, the cartoons were uh, were really a part of uh, a part of uh, the uh, the show. And uh, it was pretty cool, you know. You know, you know, it added a little bit of a lightness, lightness to it, and and uh, uh, and, and uh, pretty pretty fun and part, fun part of it. So, uh, so let's let's uh, look at a few clips. Uh, the first clip that uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at is a uh, is a clip of the uh, of. This I think was part of the of the uh, automobile uh, uh, video uh, the uh, show I think uh, uh, but anyway let's just go ahead and, and dive into that. It was only in the 19th century that oil's potential as a fuel was realised and people started drilling and refining it. One of the products of the refining was a volatile gas oil called petrol. The petrol was at first regarded as a completely useless gasoline here. This the guy. vapor was so dangerously inflammable. But it was also realized that it was an enormously potent source of energy. We can show you this with this modified firework mortar. This obviously isn't an experiment to do at home. But if Rex uh, puts a teaspoonful of gunpowder down the mortar and uh, using uh, the lager can as uh, the projectile. Oh dear. Well, it is not very powerful. Um, well, now we're going to compare this with the uh, with a teaspoonful of petrol and see how far that goes. This time we're igniting it with a spark plug in the side. You can see what an enormous amount of energy there is in the petrol. <laughs> so, there's a, uh, you know, I was thinking of recreating that uh, that experiment. That looked like a really fun experiment. However, I also thought, well, but I could probably uh, uh, arise uh, uh, the interest of uh, local authorities and something like that. And God knows they they probably uh, call in the National Guard uh, or something along those lines. So. Let's take a look at another one. This one is in the Invention of Radio. And here he's talking about 
the uh, the very first early transmitters and receivers, and he had uh, he had created a uh, recreated a device called the Cohera, which he uh, made from grinding uh, uh, nickel coins down. So the Cohera, the Cohera was a kind of a detector that was used in the very early uh, uh, transmitters and receivers. Well, the Cohera was used in the receiver, but was used uh, by the transmitters. This would have been used, uh, this type of transmitter receiving mechanism would have been used, for example, in the Titanic uh, uh, equipment. So, uh, so the, uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's take a quick, a quick look at this, uh, this clip. Elvis ideas. It's Marconi. Marconi had found that fixing one side of the spark gap to a long vertical wire made a much better aerial than Hertz's. It's enameled wire on a kite. This was further improved by connecting the other side of the spark gap to Earth. Ground. Apart from that, the transmitter was basically the same as Hertz's. Any electrical spark will do. Here it's being provided by the ignition circuit of Rex's pickup truck. This primitive transmitter has a surprisingly long range. Marconi also used a much more sensitive receiver called Coherer. This was based on a design by Oliver Lodge. This is my homemade version. It's just a tube of nickel filings. I made it by filing down a coin. You fix one end to the uh, aerial, another kite, uh, and the other end to the earth. And what happens is that when it detects the radio waves, its electrical resistance falls dramatically, so it acts as a sort of switch and turns on a circuit. The theory behind it is very complicated and wasn't worked out for till many years later, but it's quite simple to make it work. The only slightly complicated thing is that you have to have something to shake it to restore its high resistance at the end of each signal. So now if I signal to Rex, Well, there you go. That's the uh, <laughs> that's uh, your transmitter and receiving equipment. So, so there you go. Another one we're going to look at here. Another another clip that I really liked uh, uh, back in those days uh, was this one about. Uh, this one was a, was taken from the video recorder series, but it really caught my eye uh, back in those days when it ran. And uh, it, it just showed again that it was a very simple, simplistic and very effective way to describe uh, how something works. Uh, in this case, this was uh, this would be magnetic tape. So here you go. From Jumbo Jet, over 60 items are recorded. Experiments with plastic tape were started by the German magnetophone company in the 1930s. The tape's coated with a magnetic powder that actually records the signal. This powder is a, a sort of iron oxide or rust, which is why the tape's always brown. Well, we can make a primitive sort of recording tape um, using sticky tape and sprinkling some rust powder on it. Scotch tape trade name. We need a little bit more. We just have to rub it into the sticky side. Get off all the excess. Right. Right. Now we we record some sick we put it in an ordinary audio recorder. Uh, yeah, I think I've got it in the right place. Ready to say. Yep. This is recorded on sticky tape and rust. This is recorded on sticky tape and rust. Right. And now what we have to do is to play it back again. Uh, it's the right way around. Put it in. Right. 
Okay. This is recorded. This is recorded. Well, the start of it was very good. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. It's very clever. So, uh, boy, that true. That is now. That is magnetic tape. That is magnetic tape. You gotta like that. So, well, anyway, you know, if you get a chance to uh, to see the series, uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. So, uh, uh, I believe you can order it. For, I think I think uh, Tim has got a uh, website up where you can order the videos. I recommend that they're on YouTube. Uh, in fact, this I think was from YouTube here, which is pretty grainy. So I would suspect that the uh, that his uh, that his uh, CDs are probably very good, so uh, so it, and so I, I highly recommend it. So uh, this is the end. By the way, this is the end of the TV series here. They uh, he piled up a whole pile of televisions and set them on fire while they're running. So <laughs> so uh, it's interesting that some of them really uh, really continue to play rather well for quite some time. <laughs> so. So, uh, so there you go. So, if you get a chance, uh, uh, check it out on YouTube, or you know, order it up from uh, from Mr. Hunkin. I think uh, I think you 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 would like it. So, there you go. That is the story from here.